Hi everybody, this is Mr. Butch from the Moore Branch Library of the Mobile Public Library. Today I'm going to show you how to make a friendship bracelet. There are several steps, so I am going to do each one, try to do them slowly so that you can follow me. Feel free to pause at any time during the film while you're watching it until you get caught up. The first thing you need to do is to find yourself a piece of cardboard. We're going to be making a loom, which is used to weave things out of this piece of cardboard. Then you need to find something that is round. I was looking around and found this roll of tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cardboard and I am going to put my tape on the cardboard, take a pen or a pencil, and go around it so that you have a circle. Then you take your scissors or let a grown-up take the scissors, and you cut out your circle. I already have one cut out to save us a little bit of time. This is what I'm talking about. Now what we're going to do is we need to mark this circle because we're going to be cutting slits in the sides of this disc. If you're pretending like it's a clock, we want to put our first mark at 12 o'clock and our second mark at 6 o'clock on the bottom. like so. Then we need to put it at three o'clock and nine o'clock. So now it looks like this. And now we're going to go halfway between each one of them, which means we're going to put one here, one here, one here, and one here. It's basically 130, 430, 730, and 1030. Now that we have our circle marked, we need to find where the middle is. We do that by taking a ruler and putting it at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and using a pencil to draw a little bit of a line. As you can tell, I'm not quite in the center, but that's not a, that big of a deal. Then you do the same thing between the 3 and the 9. And where those two lines cross is where you're going to take your pencil and you are going to poke a hole in the middle of your piece of cardboard. All right? So now it should look like this. Don't worry about the pencil lines because they are not going to cause any problems. So just leave it just like it is. And now we're set to go to the next part.
The next part will be getting our strings ready so that we can put them onto our loom like you see this one is already done. First off, I have string, I have cross stitch floss, and I have small yarn. All of those will work great. However, the big fat kind, not really. Your finished product won't look nearly as good. Also, I tried one right here using this type of string. The problem is this isn't very strong and one of my strings broke and I only had about an inch of it done before it broke. So I don't recommend using this particular type. I think it's called hemp type of string. It's sort of hairy looking. So wouldn't use that either. Mine that I'm going to be doing is going to have string and it is going to have thin yarn for the one that we're getting ready to make. You need a ruler because you're going to need one and a half, a foot and a half, 18 inches. So I'm going to measure a piece of yarn. And then I'm going to cut it. And that is an 18 inch piece of your string or yarn or floss, whichever you have decided to use. Didn't want you to get too bored watching me cut out my string, so I paused the camera. And now I have seven pieces. That's all you need are seven. I've got three of yarn and four of string. What we're going to do now is hold them all together so that they're all at the same length. And we're going to tie a knot in one end, like this. So I have a knot now tied at this end. Before we can go any further, we take our loom and using our scissors, we cut about a half an inch, no more than that, in at each one of our marks. We have seven pieces of string, three of one color, four of another. You can change these up any way you want to. You can do two of one color, two of another color, and three of another, as long as you've got seven pieces of string or yarn, whatever you're using. Now you're going to find out what the hole was for. We're going to take the knot and we're going to push it through the 
the hole we made. Then all we have to do is take one of that color, another of the same color, another of the same color, and the fourth of the same color, and stick it through the slots going around the edge. You'll notice that when you're finished, you're going to have one spot that doesn't have anything going through it. And that's just the way it's supposed to be. This side looks like this. And this is the side with the knot in it. Now comes the actual weaving. We find where our empty spot is located and we count to three. One, two, three. We pull the third one out of its slot and move it to the, where the empty slot was. slot. There it goes. All right. Leaving you with a new empty spot. And we count again. One, two, three. I take this one out of its slot and move it to the empty slot. Here's our empty slot. One, two, three. Move it to the empty spot. One, two, three. Move it to the empty spot. One, two, three. Move it to the empty spot. As you go, you might want to give the knot a little tug. Not real, don't pull it real hard. But once you've gone around several times, pull it a little bit because what you're making is going to be coming out of the hole, your weaved part. Here's the one that I partially made. So when you're making it, it's going to come out of the bottom like that, down through the hole. And you're going to keep going around and around and around, counting to three. One, two, three. Blank spot, one, two, three. Blank spot, one, two, three. Move it to the blank one. And you just keep doing that over and over again and you will begin to get your friendship bracelet or anklet, however you want to use it. Now I'm going to sign off for just a minute so that I can sit and work on this so I can show you what it looks like along the way. Well, I've worked for a few minutes and as you can see, my bracelet is coming out through the hole. I'm going to keep working, and you keep working too. And hopefully the next time you see me, I'll have a finished product, and I can show you what to do next. I'm still working on it, but look how much I've gotten done now. And I've been working for maybe 15 minutes at the most. You can stop for a while if you want to. Just remember, 
which direction you were going. Because you'll come back just like we started. Find the empty spot. I was going counterclockwise. I was counting one, two, three. Like that. So if you want to put it down, that's fine. You can even take your pen or pencil and write an arrow on it so you know which direction you're supposed to go. But I've got quite a bit now. Some of you, this might be, nah, it, I need to do some more. I don't think it'll fit around your wrist. I know it won't fit around mine yet. So let's just keep on weaving. Once you've gone as far as you can, notice what I had to do. I cut my slits deeper and trimmed my circle and made it smaller so that I could get a longer bracelet. But once you get to this point, you're going to basically pull all of your threads back from the slits like this. And pull it on through. And there you have your friendship bracelet. The best way is to see how big it needs to be to fit on someone. This one will almost fit on me. So it probably definitely fit most of you. If it needs to be longer, remember we used 18 inch strings and yarn. You can bump that up to two feet, which is 24 inches, and that'll make one that's even longer. Then, to keep it from unraveling, you tie this end in a knot also until you find who you're going to give your friendship bracelet to, and then you can tie it around their wrist. And there we go. Friendship bracelet. Let me give you a close-up look. This is what my finished product looks like. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a friendship bracelet. And who knows, I might find something else that I want to show you how to make. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.